Hi everyone, it's Evelyn, and it's time for the mid-June garden tour. We're going to start off in the usual spot, which is the north end of our back garden flower beds, where I have five 4x8 uh, beds, absolutely crammed full of stuff. Everything is looking really lush, which is really nice because we had such a horrible May weather-wise, but it's just starting to really, really feel like summer again, although it's pretty cloudy in the sky, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Let's get started with the tour. So here's the first of the five four by eight beds. And as you can see, it's absolutely green and tall and lush. You're not gonna see many flowers on this tour because I'm cutting them as soon as they're ready to open. But you, as you can tell, my herbaceous peonies, this one's just about ready to open, are starting to bloom. They bloom after the Ito peonies of which I have eight of them in these other beds. I have six herbaceous peonies in this bed. I have two pink ones and one white one that's over there that I know of. I don't know what kind they are. My husband bought them on a clearance. I love them. I'll put the pictures up on the screen. If you know what they are, tell me because I, I would really like to be able to label them. The other three he also bought for me in a clearance but a year later so they're not blooming quite yet. Down here in the front, look at the size of my lettuce plants now. I'll give you my hand for scale. So this is my butter lettuce. If I take this leaf off and I put it to the end of my fingers there, you can see it goes up up to my wrist. It's really nice and big. I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to be picking lettuce later on. Same as my romaine. It's huge. Again, same thing. Look at the leaf. It's actually higher than my um, than my wrist. It's just uh, huge leaves there. Tuck that in there as well. And here's my drunken lady. It's um, pretty big as well, not as big if I pick a leaf. See that to the fingertips, it just goes to the end of my hand. We've been picking, I've been picking like crazy in this so that we can have salads all the time. The garlic in here are pretty small because they were just random ones popping up here and there and everywhere and I just tucked them in along the edge of this bed so that they could grow. You can see that the scapes are starting on the uh, garlics now. Look at my potatoes, look at how tall they are. They're huge. Lots and lots of potato greenery. I don't know if that's good or bad for potatoes. I don't grow potatoes often enough to remember. So let me know if you know it's good for them to have lots of greenery on them. They're getting ready to flower, lots of flowers. What do you think of the potatoes? Do they look healthy? <laughs> they look healthy, the green part. Tucked in behind them and almost as high as the potatoes, whoops, sorry, are my sweet peas. They're, uh, they've been growing too, but at the same pace as the potatoes. So they're only just as, as tall as them. These ones have not started blooming yet, but the ones in the front garden have. So that's the first of the five beds. I was going to show you the next of the five beds next, but actually what I want to do is uh, show you the uh, sunflowers growing up along the side of our, my neighbor's fence here. <laughs> look, there's a little patch here where apparently Ezri likes to come in and look through the fence there and sniff to see what's going on through there because she's got a little shed there. There's her house. There's a little little tiny road there that comes to this house, that house, and the house down there. So she likes to check out what's happening there. On this side in the dark, I've moved all the extra estilbes that I had, and I'll show you where they are later. I have two pots of just regular daisies. They do great here, so I think I'm actually going to, where there's daisies growing, just regular daisies growing in the rest of the garden, I'll pot them up and put them here. Because not too much will do well here because it's quite, quite shady. Okay, now let's go on to the next bed here. My Ito peonies, this one's being picked clean of blooms, as has this one. I don't think I see any more buds on it anymore. I've got my um, baby, baby boo? Baby boo pumpkins here, which are the little tiny white ones. They only get about four inches big, so they'll be good for bouquets in, the, in October. Here's one of my tomato plants. That's about the right size for the weather that we've been getting. Here's another one of my tomato plants as well. The cucumber that was in, in this ring uh, packed it in, so I put a baby boo pumpkin in there. Here's the kale that I keep talking about, the plant that won't quit. That's in its second year of uh, blooming and um, putting out lots of leaves too. So that's uh, pretty much finished blooming, so I won't be using those blooms anymore. Along the fence here, I have an astilbe. I have another astilbe. This is a full-headed Shasta. 
daisy. Not shafts of daisy. It's a full head of daisy. I'll put the name on the screen in the picture. And this fall I will be dividing that and putting it in one of the holes in here. I have a number of holes because I finally got around to digging up the Russian sage that I don't like. Can't stand the smell of. So one of the divisions of this will go into one of those empty spots. There's another to still be. At the back of the second bed, I have anemones. These are um, supposed to all be the blueberry, which is white with a blue center, but I'm getting the odd solid blue. I'm getting the odd red one. And there's a white one over there with a red center. I don't mind. Oh, look, I've got a peony in here blooming. <sighs> That's not, that's probably just an, whatever, that's toast. <laughs> and then along here I have more peonies. These are the Bordeaux, I believe. These ones aren't ready to um, pick yet. And at the front of the, oh, at the back of the bed, here's one of the daisies that are, chest of daisies that I want to dig up and put in one of the pots. And at the front of the bed, here's another one. But I'll leave them here for the uh, summer. Probably use those blooms self seeded with foxglove. You can see I've got more sunflowers running along the side of our garage. Here's the middle of the five beds. I've got more anemones that, that wrap literally all the way around here. Two peonies, ito peonies, one that's in bud. I've got garlic running the sides. I planted this garlic I think in January or February. Um, I was hoping to stagger the scapes, but they seem to be scaping at the same time as my earlier planting garlic over there. Another Ito peony. Like I said, more a stilby. Not a stilby. Um, anemones, more a stilby here. And here, you can see they're just getting ready to put out their blooms. And then we're on to the uh, second of the two beds second of the two beds <laughs> what am I talking about fourth of the five beds so here's where I have my ranunculus and as you can see I picked all the ones that were ready to pick this morning there's a few more that are ready to pick now but as you can see they're really starting to bloom look at how tall this stem is it goes all the way up to my shoulder so however long my arm is I'll measure it and tell you how long that is these are third year ranunculus and they started off with really, really long stems, much more so than when they're in their first year. So digging up the ranunculus gives you much better length of stems the following year. Still waiting to see what these oleums are that are getting ready to bloom. I think they're, uh, I don't know, you'll, you'll find out when they bloom. This is an interesting story. So over here by the fence, as you can see, I have a perennial poppy. So I planted this seven years ago. And I bought it in the fall and planted it. And it bloomed in that spring. Never to be seen again until this year. What happened to it the last six years? I have no idea. This campanola was a gift from a bird because it just showed up one day but it showed up elsewhere I just uh, it actually showed up in a, in a one gallon pot that had something else in it so I've just planted it in, in, in one of the gaps that had the uh, Russian sages in it one of these other gaps is going to get I'm going to split one of my white distilbies so again we've got um, marjoram or oregano here I'll find out when it blooms what color it is which one it is more uh, ranunculus here. I've got another tomato there and this is a borage plant. They sell seed all over my garden as well and um, there's a nice beautiful tall foxglove. If you're wondering what this is, this is parsley that's going to seed. So off to the fifth of the five flower beds. This Ito peony still has a number of buds on it, so that's exciting. I'll put the uh, picture of what that one is up on the screen. My originally, my first planting of garlic is all doing really well, but first down here, my, there's my zucchini, one of them. The two closest to the garlics don't look as good. They'll do better when the garlic eventually get, gets pulled. They'll take off in size. The um, escapes on here, where is it? Here's one, ready to cut. 
So you know a scape is ready to cut when it starts curling like that. And you want to cut it and use it before it starts uncurling again, because then it starts getting really stiff. I have atropurpurea alliums that accidentally got planted there from dumping a pot. I have my beautiful purple black button bachelor buttons. I've been picking them every morning as they um, open up. So again, nothing much to see here. I'll put the picture up on the screen. A couple more atropurpuriums, more borage, rosemary, astilbe. Here's my hair alliums. Sorry about all the noise in the background. The people over there are using chainsaws. The people over there are using the weed eater. People across the street are pouring concrete. It's a busy day. So here's my white is still be getting ready to bloom. I started picking strawberries the other day. In this little triangle here, I have my yarrow. It's uh, getting ready to do something. Peppermint's growing very nicely along the crack there. It doesn't spread because it's literally between the driveway and the retaining wall. The little crack between the two is, is where the uh, peppermint grows. I also get lots of poppies just popping up everywhere. So lots of annual poppies here. You can see there's some more there, more there, more there, lots more there. They're everywhere. They just pop up everywhere. And of course I have my Globemaster alliums. I haven't used them all up. And beside them is the Ambassador alliums. And what's really cool is you can really compare the difference in size between those two. Quite a bit different in size. And down here I have some more astilbe pots. Here's my raspberries in a big pot. Lots of raspberries on them. Oh, there. It produces really well. It's in a great big giant pot there. And here's my blueberries. They're also covered in um, little tiny berries on that one. These berries on this one are quite a bit bigger. And same as this one, you can see they're sort of in between in size. So that's the blueberries. Here's my Alba Noir Lavender that I take cuttings from and sell. There's one there and one there. Completely hidden from view in my garden, but perfect for uh, taking cuttings and selling them. So then, that's kind of the back garden. That's the view of the back garden. The only thing that's blooming is alliums and foxgloves because everything else is cut. Over here along the fence in pots, I have hydrangeas just beginning to put on flower heads. Just uh, mop head hydrangeas. They bloom blue here where we live because we're quite acidic. Here's an oak leaf hydrangea. And then I have a couple of hazelnut trees there. And then I have these astilbes and pots, which are, as soon as they start blooming properly, they're going to go up to the roadside wagon and get sold. Time to go up the driveway, although Ezra seems to think it's time to go down the driveway. She's probably going to go and get her ball from the uh, down by the fence there. <laughs> so I've got my three, six garbage cans of soil that when it's not raining, I water with the hose like everything else. And when it's raining, I put the lids on top. Over here, you see how, how much taller my sunflowers have gotten since the last obviously since the last one because they're supposed to grow even faster than that but the weather has not been conducive this will fill up with borage as well same as here right by the gutter borage there's columbine columbine and feverfew which is like a weed that grows all along here as well there's some taller ones there more columbine so this will fill up with borage in and amongst the sunflowers more blooming not blooming yet, but more umbels of, of uh, parsley. These sunflowers are the tallest, which is interesting because this was the second planting. Uh, that planting there is shorter. This was, would have been time-wise in the calendar, the first planting last year. I bumped it up a week to see how they would do. And I won't be bumping it up another week because they're actually not doing as well as these ones. They're a little bit smaller in size. So the, they were affected a bit more by the cold than these ones were. So this is still the perfect planting time. I'll put it up on the screen what week that was. I can't remember. That one was the week before. It's fine. It's got a columbine, pardon me, a foxglove growing in amongst it. It's got lots of parsley growing up amongst it that's going to flower. 
And what's really cool is up here is, is I have a new, look who's at the doors, there's the dogs, they want in. I have a new, I thrifted this, isn't this beautiful? I haven't got anything planted in it yet. But it goes really well with kind of like our wrought iron rail here. And then there's this beautiful, it's heavy, it's this beautiful wrought iron planter here, which has like the uh, steel insert inside that. Cool, I love that. So that was a, a new thrifted item for me since the last time I did a garden tour. I gotta wash this down because it's got all, you know, we hose off the deck and then all the dirty water comes down here and makes ugly marks that I have to clean up. So let's look at the other side of the driveway. So on the other side of the driveway, I went over the hostas with you um, in the last, last garden tour. They're growing better than they did last year because the dogs seem to know not to step on them. They actually, you can see that there's a, there's a dog path this way and that way. And then they step over the hostas, which is really, really nice. Here's another new addition to my art in the garden walk that's since the last garden tour, and that's this guy. I thrifted this guy, I don't know, the week before I thrifted the one that's on the porch. I love that. This shepherd's hook with the uh, little sun catchers of the owl and the, I don't even remember what it is, bee. Uh, those I paid full price for, but I did thrift this little copper hanger fella. The shepherd's hook was thrifted. My camellia is going to need to get pruned because it's starting to go into the driveway a bit too much. I got to prune these um, cedars as well. And yeah, so this is all looking a lot better than it did last year at this time for the simple reason that the dogs seem to have figured out not to step on plants. And um, any day old flowers from the flower wagon, I'm now putting in the little bike and the little truck that are up on the fence, which I think is fun. In the dahlia beds, their dahlias are looking a lot more lush as well. So first I'm going to show you another thrifted item that I got since the last garden tour, which I love. It's this little little um, ballerina, and she's she's quite heavy. She's wrought iron as well. It's been painted white. I love that. I got that for three bucks. How nice is that? So anyway, so these two beds. Whoops, don't step in my other bed. Hang on. These are my yellow dahlias, and you can really see the difference in the leaves between Lindsay Michelle, Wanda Scapella, and then if I go over here, Keith H. I mean, you can literally stand back and say, that's one, that's a different one, and that's a different one. This bed over here clearly had a lot of poppy seeds in it. I'm gonna let a lot of the poppies grow. I mean, it's just got loaded with poppy, little poppies growing in here as well. Funny, because uh, no, very few poppies bloomed in here last year. The center bed's looking great. There's Esri in her favorite spot chewing on a bone. There's Leela in her favorite spot chewing on a bone. <laughs> I always get a bone after they come back from the walk. I've got a few other things that have self-seeded. I've got a lettuce plant in here. Now this lettuce, I grew three years ago and have not grown it since. I did, I did let my lettuce plants bolt, but these seeds are at least three years old. So that's kind of cool. So there's, you know, this is Spartacus, AC Loomis, AC Ben, and Labyrinth. Oh, I'm going to show you something else that the birds put in my garden. So this was a few years ago, obviously, because it's bigger. But this maple tree came from a little seed that the birds dropped in the garden. And this year, they did it again. So this is what it looks like when it first comes out from a seed. So this seed, I'll show you where, where, it, uh, where I found it growing. But this will grow into that, and eventually they'll both get bigger. So that was literally... I come over here to this very leggy lavender plant. It was growing in, in the pot of the lavender plant. Pretty cool, eh? If we get back to the uh, garden tour in the front garden, we went, we went through these dahlias here. Here are some uh, dahlias and pots that are still for selling. Here's my snapdragons. Look at how much taller they are than they were before. Quite a bit taller. So they are, if I put my hand down in amongst them, they go 
about three inches past my elbow, which is a good length for cutting for bouquets because my elbow is the guide that I use. And you can see that they're just starting to put on some color there. Just barely starting. Which is good because my peonies are just about finished and I'm going to need to have something to replace them with. This bed over here will eventually have sunflowers in it. Right now it's holding some more dahlias for up at the flower wagon. And it's got my coleus, which looks absolutely horrible. Again, the weather's been terrible, but I mean, how long can I leave them in the seed room for? My frizzle sizzle pansies, they don't excite me either. That's a uh, dahlia that decided to come up on its own. I didn't have a bed here, so it was obviously just one that I tossed in for compost because I didn't think the tuber looked very good. I have no idea what kind it is. And yeah, not impressed with the frizzle sizzle pansies or the coleus. Most likely will not do those again, excuse me, next year. My daffodils are just barely dying back. My tulips are, that were in here completely died back, so they don't need to be out here sucking up any sun anymore. Again, this dahlia bed against the north fence has the uh, sweet peas, and as you can see, they are just starting to bloom. There's a little purple one there. There's a deep red one there. I've cut a couple of pink ones. I think that one's going to be a pink one. I've only cut like maybe six flowers so far, but it, you know, in another week, they'll be loaded. Lots of poppies growing in here amongst the dahlias. It's almost hard to see where the dahlias are in amongst the poppies. But if you look really closely, you see I've got bud heads everywhere. There's one that's just getting ready to open. These are Edinburgh. They're always the first to bloom. Here's the only dark-leafed uh, dahlia that I have, and that is Purple Flame. I have my espresso blads over here there's still just leaves not much happening in there oops sorry I'm not looking where the phone's point I'm looking at them and I'm moving my phone in a different direction I had said I was going to weed out all the uh, snowberry shoots that are that's coming from that plant on the other side of the fence in my neighbor's garden but I decided I can actually use them for bouquets they're great in bouquets I love this little sort of delicate flower and tomorrow not tomorrow. What day is today? Today is Monday afternoon. Thursday, I'm actually selling 25 stems to the florist that I'm dealing with of this. So it's a good thing I didn't pull them out and toss them because they're coming in very handy. They'll slowly get used up and disappear from here anyway. Here's the other dahlia bed. Same thing. I got some beautiful poppies happening in here. Nice and big. Got some flower, little flowers heads starting on these guys same as these guys it's kind of fun that I'll be getting flowers soon this dahlia bed here has another lettuce growing in it oh I forgot this one over here where is it where is it if you look really carefully what's that that's a tomato growing in here so things just kind of pop up on their own this is just a weedy mess over here where this tall strawberry pot is. I have to figure out what it is I want to plant in here. I have not figured that out yet. And um, yeah, so that's my, those are my flower beds in the front garden. If you look up to the road, you can see I have my flower wagon there. I've got the table that has the uh, pots of dahlias on it. The steps pretty much don't have anything on them right now except for a couple of chive plants. They will get the astilbes once they're blooming. So that's the garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And um, if you've been following along with me for a while, you'll you'll see how much everything's grown since since the uh, mid-May garden tour. If, you, if you're new here, I'll put a link up here to the mid-May garden tour so you can see how much everything has changed in the past month. Um, I oops, look who's here. This is Leela. No, no. <laughs> oh no, I got Esri too. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know, I'm blanking out. Oh yeah, there will never be a lot of flowers blooming in the uh, garden tours because I cut them as, as soon as they're ready to cut. 
because I do sell my flowers. I'm a tiny urban flower farm and I am not big enough to leave sections blooming just for the sake of having pretty videos. I need every blossom that I have for the flower wagon. But uh, you get the general idea. And I can leave another video link. What should I leave another video link to? How about the peony bouquets that I did? I'll leave that one down below here. And until next week, see you guys. Bye.